Hello there. Thanks for watching another video review of another one of my Chinese carbon bicycles. Today's review is on the Hongfu FM166, which is the disc brake version of an FM066. Now, this is a pretty unique bike because, as you may know, as of today, there are very few big name brand manufacturers making a race geometry disc brake road bike. So this is a pretty unique bike and there are reasons for buying this bike beyond just the fact that it's more affordable um, as a Chinese made bicycle. So just like uh, my other video reviews, I'm going to kind of go front to back and talk about uh, the good things and the bad things and Hopefully this will help some some other people out. Uh, let's just start with the overall here. Overall, I would say the bicycle, the frame and fork are totally gorgeous. Um, the The finish on them is excellent, uh, on the exterior at least. Uh, you know, the unidirectional matte carbon really lights up in the sunlight and looks great. Uh, people, I get a lot of comments on the bike. Um, and there are a few little things that I think could be cleaner on it. Um, just looking over here at the fork, you can see that the device to hold the brake line in place on the fork is just kind of a, it's a pretty uh, crude device with some kind of sheet metal screws that are countersunk and really should have be button heads and so little things like that, but overall the finish is excellent. I would say on the interior of the frame, the finish uh, is not as high quality as my bike, my mountain bike, which is made by uh, LT Bikes and LTK023. That bike on the inside looks pretty much like a lot of name brand carbon bikes. You know, there's not a lot of uh, extra carbon that's not laying smooth. This bike looks more crude on the inside, to be honest. So, with all that said, that's kind of an overall picture of the bike. Uh, this would also be a good time to address the customer service and the buying experience with Hong Fu. Um, I was dealing with pudding at Hong Fu. I think a lot of people deal with Jenny. And I have to say, I think pudding had some pretty poor customer service, especially in comparison to LT bikes. Her English is not that good. Uh, she doesn't really understand how bicycles work. Um, and I had some customer service issues that I think still remain unresolved. Overall, I probably would not buy another bike from Hong Fu. If the same thing was offered by LT Bikes, I would definitely buy it from them. Uh, Alicia is much more responsive, has much better English, uh, really knows how bicycles work. I email her today, you know, for a derailleur hanger and she gets back to me immediately. Pudding is just not on the ball at Hong Fu. So keep that in mind if you're thinking of buying one of these. You can get it through Deng Fu. I don't know if that's really any different or if you'll have a better experience, but it's definitely worth keeping in mind. So now let's really get into the meat of the bike here and uh, start from front to back. So let's uh, start at the head tube and uh, the steer and kind of move our way back. Now this would be a good time to mention too that I did purchase an integrated handlebar stem setup from Hong Fu and to be honest, even though it was gorgeous, uh, the clamp for the steer was extremely out of spec. So out of spec, in fact, that with the bolts completely bottomed out, uh, the handlebars would spin on the steer, which is somewhat terrifying. And that situation after I, two full months still remains unresolved with putting I sent the handlebars back to them at my own expense and I have yet to receive a refund. Uh, she seems hell-bent on giving me a replacement, but obviously I've already gotten a replacement. So I would definitely not recommend purchasing, I think they're called the HB006 handlebar stem setup from Hong Fu. I, I wouldn't trust those uh, with my face. So keep that in mind. Um, and I will try to find some way to attach a video of uh, those spinning while bottomed out uh, either to the end of this video or just on my YouTube stream.
for people to check out. So with that behind us, um, with the with this Sintase and Easton bar set up, uh, the front end of this bike is super stiff. Uh, I really like it. I was coming from a giant TCR Advanced, which I think has a really stiff front end, and to be honest, I think this bike is stiffer. In part, I think that a lot of people, you know, frame manufacturers test a frame with sort of their unbendable fork, and they that's how they get their frame number stiffness, but to me, I think the, the weak point you could tell where it was bending on the Giant was the steerer tube. The carbon steerer tube was not that stiff, and on this bike, it's definitely really stiff. Now, all that said, the the car the fork on this on the front end of this bike is super stiff. Um, I still can occasionally hear a brake pad rub when I'm in a leaning deep into a curve turn, but the fork on this bike is extremely. I wouldn't say it's extremely heavy, but it's heavy. It is overbuilt, big time. And uh, you'll be surprised. You'll pull the frame out of the box and the fork weighs basically the same as the frame. So just keep that in mind. Um, I don't have an exact weight, but needless to say, this thing is beefy. I mean, these fork legs are huge. Uh, one good thing is uh, Han Fu was pretty smart and they put some forward facing dropouts on this bike. So uh, they were definitely thinking smart with the disc brake. Uh, it is the frame and fork are intended for a 140 rotor setup, so if you're going to use a 160 like me in the front, you will need a spacer. So that's the front end of the bike. Uh, I don't think I'm missing anything there. Um, as we move back, nothing really big to talk about. The down tube is quite sizable. Um, it's got kind of that same squoval shape that uh, Cervelos have and to be honest this bike looks a lot like a, an R5. Um, when you walk up that's kind of your first impression. A um, couple finish issues as we move back. Uh, these little ports for the cables if you're using uh, a DI2 setup like me uh, there's not really a good way to plug this off. I just use some silicone here. Also, the uh, grommets that Shimano provides don't really fit that well into these kind of cheapy plastic plastic little ports. So um, on the other side, I use silicone there as well. Another thing that some people might uh, not like about this bike is the fact that the rear brake line here is routed externally on the, on the down tube and the bottom of the rear left chainstay. Now for me, that doesn't really bother me, uh, to be honest, I think that for a lot of people who are building their own bike, you know, yeah, would it be cleaner to have it inside, certainly, but also if you're running one of these new hydraulic setups that's coming out, it might mean that you could avoid a bleed. So that's kind of nice. Um, as we move back, didn't have any issues here with the, the seat tube, it's uh, definitely, definitely right to spec for the seat post size. I did buy originally a one of the um, Hong Fu seat posts that came with it, and boy, it's a nice light seat post and has a in, you know a pretty neat clamping mechanism. But uh, the set it has a lot of setback to it, and I like my saddle pretty far forward, so I ended up purchasing an, an Easton uh, zero setback post, and I've had no problems there. So yeah, probably one of the coolest parts of the bike is right here at the uh, seat stay junction and you can see I mean it is just so clean without a brake there um, and I think you know much like a uh, track Madone with the brake that's on the chain stays or any disc brake road bike it's gonna look a lot cleaner especially with these uh, really thin stays here so yeah moving down um, I opted not for the BB30 I, I just got the uh, BSA bottom bracket set up just for ease of installation really and uh, I I think the the bottom bracket's pretty stiff could it be stiffer probably but um, for the average rider I think it's amply stiff and you can see the C2 cluster is or the bottom bracket cluster rather is is quite significant and there's a pretty big bridge here um, the other thing to note about this bike is that it has quite a bit of tire clearance this is actually a 25 tire now it runs a little on the small side for a 25 but you can see there's ample clearance I think you could pretty easily fit a 28 
on this bike. So that's good to know. You know, a lot of people that are purchasing a disc brake road bike may want to put some bigger tires on there for some dirt road riding or et cetera, et cetera. All right. So moving back again, uh, you can see that the chain stays are quite beefy. They're really tall right here. And, um, you know, it definitely contributes to a good sense of snap. Does it feel like a Cervelo? Not quite, but uh, it feels pretty darn good. I, th I actually prefer the feel of this to my Giant. Um, I think the Giant was just so stiff that it actually felt kind of woody, and this bike has a nice snap to it. So that's a good thing. Now one, here's one bad thing about this bike. Um, the, the rear dropouts are not well designed. This little nub in here, is just too close to the rear derailleur here. Let's get in there and try to focus some. This guy here is just too close to the rear derailleur here. And so basically, you pretty much have to remove your quick release nut in order to get your wheel out. Now, you know, you could file the nut some, I guess, or maybe file this little uh, guy off your derailleur, but if you have a Frickin' $500 DI2 derailleur, not gonna want to maybe take a Dremel to that. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. This is definitely a flaw with the FM166. Um, kind of a bummer. Another issue that I had at the rear of the bike was the rear brake mount. Now, I have no idea why they did this, but they made this bike a 130 spaced rear, which makes no sense. There's not a lot of 130 disc hubs out there, and I think most of the road bikes are going to be going to 135 anyway. Uh, regardless, my friend and I both bought this frame, and they were willing to build us custom 135 ones, which they did. However, the I would say the rear spacing or the spacing for the rear brake caliper was off. Um, right here on the frame, let me kind of focus there for you. Right there, you can see I had to sandpaper this some. Now, this 140 rotor, this XTR rotor, has these kind of pins in it, and that was rubbing on the frame right there, so I had, I had to sandpaper that just a little bit. It was just pretty much the clear coat. Um, but beyond that, I had a lot of problems with the outside pad rubbing on my caliper, so I ended up having to drill out my caliper more so I could move it farther outboard to avoid that outside pad rubbing. Um, you know, these are some build issues that you run into with these Chinese bikes. They're just not quite perfect a lot of the time. But, um, you know, once I did that, I've had no problems with the rear, rear caliper, but just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, these are issues you might run into. So anyway, that is the re my video review of the FM166. I probably have maybe 300 miles on this bike. Um, I put in a century or two and it, it's a fast bike and I like it quite a bit. Um, you know, you definitely feel the mass of, of having some, some beefier disc wheels versus a lighter, lighter race setup, but I think there are going to be lighter setups coming out. Um, the, the ride quality of the bike is excellent. Now, how much of that is the fact that this is my first bike that's going tubeless? I can't really say. Um, I do think the bike rides quite well though and um, I would say my main gripes with it are definitely that rear rear dropout. Tough to get the wheel in and out and uh, and the customer service from Hong Fu. But other than that the bike itself seems to be quite good. So that's my video review. I hope this helps some people who are out there considering a disc brake race geometry road bike and are looking into Chinese ones. Feel free to comment with any questions. Thanks.